Anybody who has ever dealt with me knows not to mess with me. Now, who do you think said that? John Gotti, Gravano, Persico, Francis? <laughs> How about the most powerful woman in the United States government? Hey everyone, welcome to another sit down with Michael Francis. It's Friday, the uh, 8th of January. We've got a week already into 2021. Hope everybody's doing well. Hope the outlook is good. And uh, what a crazy week it was. Boy, I'll tell you, some of the things that are happening in Washington and in our government, I don't think anybody ever anticipated. And uh, I need to do something today that I normally don't like to do. I don't want to get into politics, but you know what? You know, in, in, uh, in the Christian faith, we, we have something that's called a sin of omission rather than a sin of commission. And that means when you avoid something, when you could, when you have a voice or you can possibly add something to something to make it better, uh, you're supposed to do that and not just be neutral and not just keep your mouth shut. And, you know, I do have a platform. People do listen to me. I get thousands and thousands of comments and emails. And I got to make a comment on this. And I'm going to take you back. You know, um, a couple of years back during the Obama administration, um, I had just written my book, I'll Make an Offer You Can't Refuse, business book. Many of you have it. Thank you very much for picking up a copy. And uh, after I finished that, my publisher said, I want you to write another book. And they said, what's the topic? And uh, they said, we want you to do a political book. And I said, man, I don't want to get into politics. But then I started to think about it. And I said, you know, this government is acting more like the mob than I ever seen it in my day when I was in the mob. And I said, I'm gonna call it a mafia democracy and I'm gonna let people understand where our government is headed and how Machiavellian it's becoming. Because remember, Machiavelli, 15th century uh, Italian statesman, he's kind of the patron saint of the mob, wrote the book called The Prince. Many of us mob guys read it when we go to prison. I certainly did. And uh, unfortunately, I saw so many parallels between the government, the way it's operating, and the mob under this whole Machiavellian ideology. It's not a gimmick, it's real. And, you know, some people make a comment, oh, listen, we're gonna get, you know, preached to about the government from a former mob guy. Well, first of all, I'm not preaching. I'm gonna point some things out. And second of all, listen, I was there. I seen corruption, I was involved in corruption, I was on the street. I know what these guys do, many of them. I'm not throwing you know, the blanket over every politician, but I'm saying that the system is becoming more, ideal, more Machiavellian in its ideology, and that's dangerous. People come to me and say the mob would do a better job of running the country than the government would. Well, that's not a good thing. You don't want the mafia, you don't want the mob running the country. They got their place and the government is supposed to be upright and honest and doing their job right for the people, and that's not the mob mentality. So as a result of that, I'm going to get into it a little bit. I'm writing the book now. I held off for a number of years, didn't want to write it. I changed my mind. I said, you know what? I don't need the political stuff. It's too much of a, of a you know, flashpoint for people, and even now. And so um, you know, I hope you can reserve your comments. I hope you can think, because this is not about Trump, and this is not about Republican or Democrat. This is about the government, the government system, and how I believe and how I'm going to point it out in my new book, Mafia Democracy, which by the way, it's not gonna be out for a couple of months, so I'm not here to sell it today. I'm here because we had a tough week in government. On Wednesday, rioters stormed the Capitol building and interrupted a congressional proceeding where we were certifying the next president of the United States. It's never happened, or if it's happened, it's hundreds of years ago. I mean, I have never seen this country so divided as I'm seeing it now. In the last several years, you can blame Trump. You go, it doesn't matter who. It's a country divided. We had 75 million that were passionately, allegedly voting for Trump. We had 80 some odd million allegedly, you know, passionately voting for Biden. And there is a very, very definite line in the sand the way these two parties are thinking right now. It's very definite. And the country is, it's at a fever pitch. And it's scary, to be honest with you. You know, not for me, but for my kids, my grandkids, for people out there. 
What is America going to look like in the next 10, 15, 20 years? I'm not a prophet. I can't predict it, but I can tell you that it's not going in the right direction, in my opinion. Now, first thing I want to deal with. Will anybody argue with me when I say politicians lie all the time? They lie all the time. You know what the sad thing about it is? We accept it. We put these people in office. We elect them. We're the people. We elect them, and we elect them to represent us honestly, with integrity, for our benefit, for the benefit of our nation, and for the people. And they get up there, and they lie to us all the time, and we accept it. Let me give you a couple examples. I'm going to be reading some things from my book. I normally don't do this, but these are notes right out of the book. I want to read this to you. Consider the following statements made during the 2016 presidential primary season. Donald Trump said the United States has the highest taxes of any country in the world. That was a lie. Hillary Clinton claimed ISIS used footage of Trump in recruiting videos. That was a lie. Bernie Sanders boasted that the Valley News endorsed him for president. That was a lie. And Marco Rubio said the United States was not modernizing its nuclear weapons. Another lie. As, Paul, as uh, PolitiFact has reported, each of these claims is demonstrably false. And while pud pundits, editorialists, and loyalists can argue about the degree of deception intended by the speakers, the common voter, you and I, and every elementary school student knows these statements for what they really are. They're lies. And they do it all the time. Not only these people, but so many of our politicians lie to us all the time. When you read this chapter in the book, you're going to see so many examples of it. You're going to say, I can't believe this. But you know what we say? Ah, it's politics. They lie all the time. Why do we accept that? If we're parents, we don't accept that from our children. Our husbands and wives, we don't accept that from one another. Our friends, people in business, when people lie to us, we ostracize them. We're upset. We let them know it. But in government, something that's so important, we allow them to lie. Eh, it's just politics. It's not right. Now, I want to tell you this. When I talk about Machiavelli, I want you to listen to, to what Machiavelli says about this. He's not an enthusiast for lying. He just thinks you have to do it. Being Machiavellian doesn't, does not mean having no moral compass. Machiavelli recognized the distinction between right and wrong, but he also believed that being an effective leader meant you could not always tell the truth and do what's right. Now I want to ask all of you. I want to hear what you have to say about that. Write, write comments in this YouTube. Tell me what you think. Do you think it's okay for our politicians to lie? Do you think it's accepted something that we should accept? All of them across the board, Republican, Democrat, conservative, progressive, doesn't matter. Are, are we to accept the fact that they lie to us? They lie to us about things that are very, very serious. Go oh, back to Obama. You can keep your hospital. You can keep your, your insurance plan. These are out and out lies. And if you really dig into this deeper and deeper and deeper, you'll find out that they, these weren't accidental lies. These were intentional lies to get a law passed. That's what they were. Not picking on Obama. It's an example that's out there. We're all dealing with Obamacare. We understand it. These are lies. They lie to us, and, and bad things happen as a result, and we just accept it. Because remember, we are the victims of the lies, not them. They're living pretty good. We're the victims. Now, I want you to read, listen to this about what Machiavelli says, what his ideology is. And I want you to close your eyes for a minute and just think about our politicians. Just think about this. And by the way, this is very mob-like. I am telling you, it's so mob-like. I'm not going to get into it all now in a 20-minute video, but you're going to see this in the book. It's very mob-like. The prince, in the prince, Machiavelli instruction included a very telling yet perverted philosophy. Perverted. He counseled the prince to employ this seriously flawed philosophy in dealing with his subjects. Listen to this. It's necessary for a prince to learn how not to be good according to the circumstances. In other words, be dishonest when you have to. Lie, steal, cheat, do whatever is necessary to gain an advantage and justify your actions according to the circumstances you're in. Machiavelli said a prince should always appear to have virtues even if he really doesn't have any. Appearing virtuous is better than being virtuous because the prince picks up the benefits of looking good while not having to actually be good. Do you see what he's saying? He's saying it's better to be able to lie, steal, cheat, not be good, because then you're not bound by the virtues of being good. 
But that's what you need to do to stay in control and stay in power. Now close your eyes. Think of some of these people. I'm not going to mention names because then you're going to come back at me and say, oh. Think of some of the people in government that are making you believe or trying to make you believe that they're acting on your behalf, on our behalf. They're all for the people. Look at their bank accounts and see how, how, how much they care about the people. I'm going to get into that also. Unconstrained by virtue, a prince can do what he needs to do in any situation. He then has no internal limits, no bounds, no rules. Still, even though on the inside he's able to scheme, he should always appear to him who sees him and hears him to be altogether merciful, faithful, humane, upright, and religious. Talk about hitting the nail on the head again. Close your eyes and think of our politicians today. Across the board, think of that. They appear to be good, they appear to be upright, they appear to be virtuous, but what's really going on? And we allow it. We put these people in office, not only once sometimes, but a second and third time. You know, I gotta say this. I read the New York paper every single day I read the New York Post. In the last seven years, when Bill de Blasio was the mayor, and I'm, I'm not a New Yorker, I have nothing to, you know, he doesn't affect me in any way. In the last seven years, I have never one time read a good article about de Blasio. Not one time. All you hear is how he's screwing up the city. And yet they voted him in for a second term. I don't get it. Why? People complain about this man all the time. There's something in the system that I'm going to reveal. Machiavelli also believed this. He said, politics have no relation to morals. Do you believe that? Do you believe every politician is moral? That they act in, in, in a moral way, upright, honest, having integrity? Think about it. The promise given was a necessity of the past. The word broken is the necessity of the present. What Machiavellian is saying is, when I made a, a promise trying to get elected, or when I made a promise trying to get a bill across, or when I made a promise trying to get my point across, it was... It was meaningful at that time. I had to do it. I had to make that promise. But right now, I can break that promise because it's necessary. That's what he's saying. So what he's saying, it's okay to lie. And again, we accept it. So now I want to get into something else. This, is, this has got to change, people. Now I want to get into a little an, another area. I want to read something by Al Capone. I have a lot of quotes from Capone. If you saw my last video, you'll see it. He wasn't a dummy. I can tell you that. Here's a quote, any guy who pretends he is enforcing the law and steals on his authority is a swell snake. The worst type of these punks is the big politician. Capone was calling them out back then. Why he had so many of them on the payroll? They all appear to be virtuous. They're all saying they're upholding the law. And meanwhile, he's paying them, paying them off. They're shaking him down. He's paying them off to keep quiet with his bootlegging operation, whatever it might have been. So he knows. He knows what kind of people they were. And I'll be honest with you, too. I had some people on my payroll. When I was getting my licenses for the gas business, I was paying people to get the license because I couldn't get them otherwise. And I was getting them. Now it was illegal. But they appear to be virtuous, no doubt. I want you to listen to this. The current Speaker of the House, Nancy Pelosi, once explained her approach to handling attacks from Republicans in this manner. If people are ripping your face off, you have to rip their face off. Now, you know why this is upsetting? All the rhetoric in this country now, all the divisiveness, it starts at the top. And I'm not going to give Trump a pass on this. Look, Trump gets bombarded. He got bombarded every day from the minute he was nominated. But his rhetoric, a lot of it was uncalled for. I believe a lot of people are so disgusted with the, the, the rhetoric coming out of his mouth. He couldn't control himself, arguing with people, going after them, calling them names wasn't the right thing to do, in my opinion. And I think it hurt him in a big way. But that rhetoric trickles down to the people on the street. We saw it happen on Wednesday. Nancy Pelosi, the, the language that she used, the, the way she called people out, and not only her. These are the two most you know, obvious at the moment, but I can pick out so many of them. Okay, but that's what she says. If people are ripping your face off, you have to rip their face off. I'd hear that in a mob social club. I don't know if I'd hear it. I didn't think I'd hear it in Congress. Congresswoman Pelosi demonstrates this mentality again in a statement she made during her term as the most powerful woman in government. Anybody who has ever dealt with me knows not to mess with me. Really, Nancy? 
Why is that? Why is that? Is that a mob social club uh, a statement? Or is that something from the most powerful woman in the country? Well, now the second one, okay? But Nancy Pelosi, Speaker of the House. Is that the kind of language you use? I don't think so. This is another one. Remember Tom DeLay? He was the former Republican House Majority Leader. Listen to this. In response to a worker's request for him to douse his cigar because federal government regulations banning smoking in the building that he was in, he rebuked her by adamantly declaring, I am the federal government. Really, Tom DeLay, you are the federal government? No, you're a servant. You're an elected official by the people to serve the people. But that's the mentality that they have. We put them in office and they think now that they're the rulers, that they can do whatever the heck they want, that we're their subjects when actually it's the opposite. They are public servants. We're paying their salaries, aside from all the other money that they're earning, as a result of getting into that position, power and money. This is the, the objective, to stay in there, power and money. I'm going to show that to you in this book, trust me. And these are going to be very, very real examples, not something made up. And you're going to see the comparisons of the way we operated on the street and how they were operating now. <sighs> people, I want to tell you this. I can get into it a lot more. And uh, some people are going to get upset with me. But rem remember what I said. This is not about Democrat. You know, it's not about Republican. It's about the condition of our government. I want to tell you this, and, and some people are going to disagree with me, but this country is falling away from God. God is being thrown out of America in a big way, not in the Christian churches, but everywhere else. The word God is not supposed to be used. I'm not going to get into all of it. You know where it's at. Look it up. I'll tell you what, you know, for those of us that believe in God, and I think many of us do, I think most of us do, he's paying attention. Biblically, okay, there's some precedent for this. Uh, I'm not saying we're in the end times. I'm not a prophet. I don't know. I read my Bible, but I don't know. But I'm telling you, Things are not headed in the right direction. And unless we make a change of course, a dramatic change of course, I believe we're in trouble. Now, look, I'm a Christian. I don't, uh, I'm not ashamed of it. I put it out there as often as I can. I've been doing it for the last 25 years. And I'm telling you, this nation has to turn back to a, it has to get its moral compass straight because things are not right. And we got to get it right. That's all I can say. So, that's it for today. I know this was a little bit of a maybe Debbie Downer, you know, but we had a rough week and I think we got a rough month coming up. So I hope everybody just takes a breath, watches what's going on. There's certain things that we can't control, those things that we can't control, we got to let them happen. And then when we are in a position to control them, come our next time, our next elections, let's do what we need to do. Let's hold our politicians accountable. Let's do that. Our founding fathers knew what they were doing when they created that constitution. Let's hold people to it. Let's not pervert it. Let's not change it because of the times. Let's do the right thing. That's it for today. I want to thank everybody again. 335,000 subscribers. You people have just been wonderful. When we hit 500, going to be another big giveaway. I promise you, every giveaway is going to be better than the one before. So I understand a guy got his laptop. He was happy. Books are going out. From the last giveaway, everybody's doing great. Keep subscribing. We'll keep giving you some great content. Promise. A lot of things now in the planning stage. We're trying to we're trying to weed through COVID and see what interviews we can do. You know, face to face. You know how I like to do them, not over the uh, the Zoom. But we're getting there. MichaelFrancis.com just growing. So many of you that have struggled through COVID are involved in our community and people are getting helped and encouraged and, and, and uh, the hopelessness that I sensed in some people is going away. People are getting a better outlook. That's what michaelfrancis.com, that's what my crew is all about. So continue on that. And uh, what do we got coming up? We got Mob Movie Monday coming up. You guys loved uh, American Gangster. I got to thank you for that. It was a great movie. Well, we got some good ones coming up. Uh, I may be thinking about doing uh, Boardwalk Empire pretty soon. A lot of people like that. Uh, also, uh, The Godfather of Harlem, kind of a follow-up to American Gangster. We got that on track. That's coming up too. So stay tuned. We got some good things coming up. I'm leaving you now. And how do I always leave you? Be safe. Be healthy. God bless. I'll see you next time.